Welcome back to the charismatic voice. I recently saw Kickapoo for the first time and I just couldn't help myself. I had to watch The Pick of Destiny, which is amazing and hilarious. And I'm totally swooning over JB's voice now. So we're going to take another dive into a Tenacious D song, Tribute. Let's get to it. This is the greatest and best song in the world. <laughs> Tribute. <laughs> Long time ago, me and my brother Kyle here. <laughs> we was hitchhiking down a long and lonesome road. All of a sudden, there shined a shiny demon in the middle of the road <laughs> and he said play the best song in the world or I'll eat your soul <laughs> me and Kyle <laughs> I'm totally digging this setup this, this is uh this is fun it creates a lot of um a lot of intrigue Partly because Kyle is just riffing on like the same chord over and over and over, right? So you feel this buildup happening, which is awesome. There were a few other awesome things that Jack Black does in here, which contribute to amazing dialogue and suspension in the recording. So I want to go back and talk about some of these awesome moments. <laughs> Hilarious space. This is the greatest and best song in the world. <laughs> Tribute. <laughs> okay. So, a lot of people, when they get in a recording booth, they feel like they need to be still or they feel like they can't be expressive anymore. And I would just say to you all, watch Jack Black and notice how he is 100% acting everything out. Even the pause, it's a, it's what some people call a very pregnant pause, right? It, it seems to hold us. And look at what he does with his face and body during that pause. <laughs> this is the greatest and best song in the world. <laughs> so intentional about that pause. Tribute. <laughs> Again, intentional about the pause. My brother Kyle here. We was hitchhiking it's a down a long and lonesome road. All of a sudden, <laughs> there shined a shiny demon in the middle. I wouldn't have understood this if I hadn't watched Pick of Destiny first. So thank you to all of you that said I had to watch it. I was already gonna watch it anyhow but it was really awesome. And it had the same devil, uh, Satan guy, who is played by Dave Grohl, who is a drummer, I think for Nirvana, and also I think he sings for Foo Fighters, which is kind of cool. He's like super multi-talented. Uh, anyhow, it was kind of exciting to see him pop up and see some sort of through line that's from Pick of Destiny to this music video. Do they do that with all their videos? I don't know, I'm curious, I'm going to find out. <laughs> There shined a shiny demon in the middle <laughs> of the road. And he said, <laughs> Play the best song in the world, or I'll eat your soul. <laughs> There's so much play with making sound here. In order to create this really pinched kind of sound, I think that there is going to be essentially like a lot of pharyngeal squishing that's happening. <laughs> um, so back in our mouths, like there's this cavern that's back there and the sound gets created down at your vocal folds. When the air comes up, your vocal folds go wacka, wacka, wacka. That creates a pitch. And then that pitch essentially marinates somewhere in your vocal tract. And in this particular case, 
he's closing off a portion of it so it doesn't have as much marination time and that makes it a much more narrow and uh, like less of a three-dimensional sound, if you will. There's less uh, less roominess for it to pick up more resonance, more um, like various different kinds of timbral qualities. And so if you close that space off, you get something that's a little bit more like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> All of a sudden, there shined a shiny demon in the middle of the road. And he said, play the best <laughs> song in the world. It's a funny sound. I'll eat yourself. Oh dear. Well, me and Kyle, we <laughs> looked at each other. And we each said, okay. <laughs> we played the first thing that came to our heads. Just so happy. Yeah. <laughs> Into my eyes and it's easy to see One and one make two, two and one make three It was destiny <laughs> Oh, he's so the sun does shine And the moon does glow And the dust does grow That was so smartly composed. This is one of the things I love about them. They're really good at composing as the entire film showed. And they're also not afraid of making fun of themselves. The humor aspect is amazing. And then the way that they use music to emphasize that humor is incredible. And so in this particular instance, you know, Kyle has been riffing on the same chord the whole time. It's been hanging out totally stagnant harmonically. And then when they get into their song, he's like, yeah, we're gonna have some chord changes now. And those chord changes feel so, so sweet because we were deprived of them for so long. So one more time, back here. And we each said, okay. <laughs> okay. We played the first <laughs> thing that came to our heads, just so happened to be the best song in the world. It was the best song in the world. Look into my eyes and it's easy to see. One and one make two, two and one make three. It was destiny. And part of the greatness of the humor here is that they're using very elegant English at times, like das, right? And that really works with this whole idea of, of Satan and sort of ancient talk back and forth. And I also just love the wittiness of the lyrics and the harmonies that they have. Really, really cool. Okay, <laughs> gonna keep going. <laughs> Needless to say, the beast was stunned. <laughs> A whip crack went his rumpet tail, and the beast was done. He asked us, <laughs> "Be you angels?" And we said, "Nay." <laughs> that was really cool. He did a little yodel in that run. <laughs> Those are good runs together, especially with the harmony. Okay, I think that I've heard this line somewhere before. Somebody must have showed it to me. I'm not sure. It might have been Kirk. If that's the case, he owes me Nutella. Um, pretty good deal right there, right? Um, but this line is so good. <laughs> this is not the greatest song in the world. You're like, wait a second. I thought I thought that you just played the greatest song for the devil. You're like, no, 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 no. Um, this is just a tribute, guys. <laughs> that's amazing. Again, the humor is amazing. We're going to go back a little bit. There are a couple of vocal things I want to explain now. Oh, ooh, 
oh, oh I, I don't know what we're going to go to there. They had a really funny intro to this video, by the way, which I encourage everyone to go back and watch the whole thing straight through without my interruptions to get that like full listening experience. And you can come back and analyze it again with me. The way that Jack Black moves his mouth is so cool. It, he's like a poster boy of mouth shaping. Right, so I talked a little bit earlier about the way that you create the pitch here first. You have to breathe first, right? That's very important, but you create the pitch here. And then there's that chamber inside and you can really shape the tone in there. But there's all kinds of shaping that happens continuously on the way out, right? With the lips moving, um, you know, just having your lips off your teeth, like more in a pucker, um, that really changes the way the tube is going to make the sound um, resonate as well versus having them a little pulled back. If you have longer lips, you can accent different formats versus having lips that are much more pulled back like this. Uh, it's very, very interesting. He is so playful with the different kinds of sounds that he's making. And even if you didn't hear him, if you just watched the way his mouth moves, you would immediately know this person is one of the most explorational, explorative singers you'd ever, ever seen, much less heard at that point, right? I'm gonna go back a little bit again. Just watch his mouth movement, it's great. I love seeing that profile view of it. <laughs> just imagining in LA walking by something like this because right, LA is such an amazing, uh, amazing conglomeration of artists and uh, people who have both entrepreneurship and creativity together. They're making things in the world and they're making things happen. So anyhow, I feel like they they kind of nailed it. Like you would totally you would totally hear this walking by somewhere in LA. It would happen for reals. And everybody's just like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> chilling. Do the greatest song in the world, all <laughs> I love this section. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like they're almost imitating instruments in some way, but also kind of pretending to be like a little beatboxy in some way at, at the same time. But mostly they're just really having fun with sounds. Fluga, giga, the beat. It's not even, it's not even like your typical jazz scatting, but that's the closest thing that I think I could uh, compare it to. The syllables and the way they play with ones that are kind of ridiculous is hilarious. Oh, actually, oh my gosh, that is such a good reaction face. <laughs> you should do reactions. <laughs> what are these sounds? He purposely is leaning into funny sounds like burr, burr, burr. He, like he plays with a lot of vowels that aren't pure vowels they're mixed they're ones that uh, your classical teacher might tell you to stray away from you know our colored vowels are sometimes considered not the prettiest vowel and Jack Black is like nah <laughs> we're not aiming for pretty here we're aiming for fun <laughs> one more time I love this part <laughs> and even a yodel! <laughs> Good luck. 
too. And the peculiar thing is this, my <gasps> friends. The song we sang on that fateful night, it didn't actually sound anything like this song. <laughs> oh, so they're saying that, got it. They're saying that the song that they sang for the devil the first time was the greatest song, but they forgot it by now, which is reminiscent of the end of Pick of Destiny. I love the breaking of, it's not only the breaking of the fourth wall, but I'm going to call it that in this moment where he pops out of the box and uh, talks to the little old lady who swipes him with a purse and is like, no, don't sell me your stuff. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. So does Dave Grohl also play guitar? He uh, he seems kind of like an incredible, one of those people that just can really do anything. And his his tongue is very, very creepy. As <laughs> Satan makes me wonder if he has good tongue position when he sings though, because he's got really, really great control of it. Okay. Don't touch me! It didn't actually sound anything like this song. Hit him with your purse. Hit him with your purse. <laughs> Whoa! Wait! 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 What's that? This has been Stiller. What's that been? I wonder if they regularly collaborate or if they did this maybe right after Pick Up Destiny. That's crazy. Cameo. I love that he's so clearly playing this on an acoustic guitar in the middle of a highway and they had that beginning that made you feel like, okay, this is going to feel like a little country, kind of, you know, a little more folk and he's sticking to that image, but we are getting a totally different sound now. Go back a little more. <laughs> I can't believe that she cataloged. No way to hook us. Ooh, yeah, get that album. Is she the new Satan? I both loved and hated that ending. It made me want more. It made me feel like something was missing in life. Like I need to hear more of Tenacious D. <sighs> I like the way they are so creative and witty with their composition, right? They really know how to use harmony and, and sort of more simple music structures, essentially, to create so much comedy in the music. I love the way that Jack Black is not afraid to explore his entire instrument to bring these messages to us that are just totally ridiculous and fun and also sound really good. It's really, really fun to watch. If you haven't seen the Kickapoo video yet and seen that first dive into his voice, you should totally check it out. It's over here at this link. And I'll hope to see you in another video soon.